Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God. Welcome to the calling of the Revelator, part 9. Likewise, we continue from the previous chapters, from part 1, part 2. And I'm not going to be giving you a brief recap of what you covered on those eight stages of different presentations of various insights and revelations defining the calling of the revelator and representing it to the world. And today in the calling of the revelator part nine, we are focusing on the ministry without location and boundary. The ministry without location and boundary. And we are also focusing on the word outreach beyond borders. So for us to understand this part nine dimension in the ministry without location and the word outreach. Let's get into scriptures in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 1. And it reads, The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That is, in Mark, chapter 1, verse 1, introducing a new dimension of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Meaning that, this is not just another scripture or just another book in the Holy Bible, but an introduction of a new dimension which signifies and, re and resembles another calling. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his way straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and the of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. This was the earlier dimension of John the Baptist before the actual introduction of Jesus calling. Who is the one that has been already magnified and signified and represented in the very first scripture? And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a gaggle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat only locusts and wild honey. I remember explaining about it, this part, saying John only ate locusts and wild honey, not because this is the only type of food that he could eat, but because he only lived for the word of God. He only suffered for the word of God. He only survived for the word. He was not a flamboyant preacher. But all the city would go and get baptized. So don't think that John could not afford the flamboyant life or the expensive life of a preacher. But he only survived and sacrificed for the word of God. And John preached, saying, There cometh the one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose, the one whose shoelaces I am not worthy to untie. And he was talking about Jesus 
was coming with a new dimension in the spirit. And this new dimension was a dimension that was unique in its own way. And I indeed have baptized you with the water, but he that is coming after me shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straight away coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. This was a dove that descended upon Jesus in form of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit resembled and signified itself in form of a dove in the Spirit. This was a confirmation at another level. Because there are so many confirmations that signified the calling of Jesus Christ. Before he even started pursuing his purpose. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This was another confirmation. So there isn't only one confirmation concerning a certain calling. Before Jesus even came, John was preaching the coming of Jesus. And even when Jesus had come, there was a confirmation of not only the voice from heaven, but the dove that descended upon the shoulders or the Holy Spirit that descended upon the shoulders in form of a dove. And even after all those confirmations, we still had people that wanted to dispute or to debate concerning the calling of Jesus because there will always be oppositions. And immediately, and immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. This is a narrative writing that is written concerning Jesus' calling before he even started pursuing his purpose in the Spirit. Up until the moment he is driven into the wilderness by the same Holy Spirit to be tempted by the devil. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels also ministered unto him. Now, after that, John was put into prison. And the reason why John is put into prison is because he is meant to pave way for Christ to preach the word. There is no way that there can be two callings that are almost similar because both of these callings there is something that was uh, similar between the calling of Jesus and the calling of John the Baptist though Jesus ca calling cannot be compared because he was the son of God and the Messiah both of them they preached to the people to repent from their sins for the kingdom of God is near they lived for the word. They preached to the people to repent. They preached against sin. And saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now, as he walked by the sea of Galilee, this was now Jesus. He saw Simon and Andrew and his brother casting a net into the sea for the fishers. So people here, yeah, I want you to understand something about Jesus calling. Jesus has gone to fast in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And he has come back into the city. But when he has come back into the city, he does not look for a place to book a wall. He does not look for a specific place to start his ministry. He does not pitch a tent. He begins to call disciples. And 
of all the places that you would expect Jesus to start his ministry, he begins his ministry in workplaces. The very same places that are insignificant for one to go and preach the word are the places that Jesus is seen. The ministry without location and the boundary. Jesus at the beginning of his ministry, he is already defeating the word called the boundary. He is already defeating the word limitation. He is already preaching the word in places that you don't expect the word of God to manifest. Do you understand what I'm saying? He is already preaching the word of God in places where the word of God is not expected to be heard, and that is in workplaces. That is the word outreach, the word of God, reaching places that are not expected beyond borders. In workplaces where one cannot expect the gospel to be heard, but where one expects business to be in full swing, that is where Jesus starts to preach the gospel. And Jesus said unto Simon and Andrew, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. He does not only enter into workplaces, but he enters into those workplaces for a purpose. To tell them, to preach to them, to change their trade, to change their beliefs, to minister the word, to demonstrate the word of God. Instead of Simon and Andrew fishing another product, he converts them to end up fishing another product. Instead of Simon and Andrew fishing money, instead of Simon and Peter fishing prophets, he converts them in the spirit to fish souls in the spirit. And straight away, they forsook their nets and followed him. They did not wonder or doubt, but straight away, they forsook their nets and followed Jesus. And when he had gone a little further, then he saw James and the, the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who were also in the ship mending their nets. And straight away he called them, and they left their father Zebedee. They had to leave their father. They had to leave their father, the one that they had grow, grew up with. He le they were left, not only their father, but even their own relatives. And they also left the hired servants inside the ship and went after Jesus. And they went into Capernaum and straight away on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And we all know that it was restricted to preach on a Sabbath. But Jesus breaks another boundary. And which form of boundary there? He breaks the laws for goodness sake, not for rebellious purposes. He breaks the rule of Sabbath and he starts to preach in the synagogue. For the Pharisees and Sadducees believed that nothing was supposed to be done on the Sabbath. And Jesus starts to preach into the synagogue. And those that were listening to his gospel were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was there in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. Because Jesus' presence was felt in that synagogue, it means unusual manifestations were bound to happen. So I want you to understand that Jesus is coming from the desert. He enters into the city. He wins disciples in workplaces. 
now he's preaching in the synagogue all these places that he has walked and all these places that he has entered is not permanent in one place he is mobile in the spirit and the spirit that cried out in the synagogue cried out saying let us alone what have we to do with you jesus of nazareth demons understand and demons have the knowledge of knowing who is the son of god and who is the anointed why is all of those that were in the synagogue went further to an extent of persecuting jesus to the extent of wanting to throw him over the headlong but demons in the synagogue were away of the son of man who had come to deliver the captivated and the demon cried out confessing the anointing have you come to destroy us i know you you are the holy one of god and jesus rebuked him saying hold thy peace and come out of him and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice he came out of him and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what is this thing what new doctrine is this the reason why they were surprised is because this was a new dimension of calling that was operating in an unusual manner for many were used to that calling of a preacher that stands on the pulpit many were used to that calling of a preacher whose calling begins when he climbs on the pulpit and it ends when he goes down the pulpit many were used to that calling that is defined defined by a sunday service and it ends there they had never seen a calling that is so unique and that operates breaking limitations in outreach in the word of god for they were amazed to see an authority that commands he even that had unclean spirits and the unclean, and the unclean spirits would still obey him and immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about galilee it means media started spreading through speculations and allegations and rumors everyone was talking about what they had seen and in this generation the only way that can happen is through a ministry online something has to be done somewhere the power of god is to be shown somewhere for the word of god to spread and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of simon and andrew with the james and john but simon's wife simon had a wife later on in the book of acts we know that simon no longer had that wife he was now doing the work of god not because the wife was a bad person but because this was a requirement of the calling but simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell him of her and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto them and at even when the sun did set they brought unto him all that were diseased diseased and them that were possessed with the devils at simon's house and all the city i want you to listen to this part as i'm about to finish and all the city was gathered together at the door i want to ask you a question why would the whole city be gathered at the door instead of simon peter going to book a hall all the city being gathered at the, at the, the door why why allow the whole city to be gathered at the door isn't this supposed to be a residence where the work of god is not meant to be done no this is an outreach this is a ministry without boundaries this is a ministry without limitations 
And Jesus healed many that were sick of devils, diseases, and cast out many devils. Inside that house, at the door, and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. So, people of God, I want you to understand this dimension of calling with no permanent location. A, a ministry that is mobile, a ministry that breaks borders in the spirit, a ministry without a location. Until next time, have a blessed day.